Well, welcome everybody. It's, it's really great to see all your faces out there. Um, uh, uh, it's been quite a time. <laughs> and uh, despite the time, we, we keep moving forward. It's really a pleasure to have you here today, Mark. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. And I know you did a little pinch hitting, but I think we're very fortunate to have you, especially with all your experiences. When we talk about the customer experience, can you just tell me a little bit, because we have a lot of students in the field, and I know we have some young professionals that might already be in the field, but how did you get to the place that you're at? Purely by luck. No, I, uh, so, uh, I did not grow up in a farm. Actually, I grew up in New Jersey outside of New York City. I, uh, after graduate school, I started with a company uh, called John Deere in a uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions type role, and just was very fortunate through a series of different assignments ended up in John Deere's precision ag business right at the time where precision ag was really taking off. And from that point on, I really was kind of hooked on the, the opportunity of driving technology, software applications into hard equipment and doing that through a digital channel, doing that on a global scale. And since then, I've had several opportunities and now with ACCO, I'm in a very similar space of bringing technology to the farmer with a focus on driving profitability, high user experience, and ultimately uh, user satisfaction. Can you tell, you tell me a little bit about the customer, the farmer? How do, you, how do you drive that relationship? How do you figure out what's important to a farmer? Especially, I mean, do you show up in your suit and on the, on the field? How do you get that information? Yeah, I do not show up in my suit. Um, <clears throat> the best way to get that knowledge is through field visits. And we're lucky that we have a, a group of what I call lead users. Corporate farms are very on the cutting edge of uh, farming practices that we rely on their input. We also rely on our, our dealer channel. They, at the end of the day, are the relationships, so have the primary relationships with the farmers. You know, they help us arrange tours. And what we, one thing we really stress in all of our areas of AGCO is the opportunity to go out and visit a farmer have a conversation, understand what their pain points are, understand what their challenges are, and see that in-field experience or, or, or process that we can hopefully bring a technology solution to enable to improve. So what was your biggest surprise with the customer when you're first learning about this field and trying to understand, or maybe it's a recent surprise with all the changes that we've seen in the world and, and, and in the, the industry? Yeah, when I got my first opportunity to come into the agricultural space, I was amazed by the amount of technology that existed 10 years ago, or almost 15 years ago now. As I look at that today, I'm even more amazed about the technology that continues to come out. Uh, as we kind of think about this digital transformation, the, the digital thread continues to get longer and longer. And, and when you create or solve for one problem, that just opens up an opportunity for another. And just to give you an example, you know, 15 years ago, it was all about guidance, getting that in-field uh, machine to drive straight uh, uh, on a guidance line. From there, it moved to getting data off the tractor back to a dealer, back to a, uh, an agronomist or ag service provider. And now it's all about taking that data analytics, uh, creating that insight, and then driving prescriptions back into the tractor. So as this transformation has occurred, each step that you improve creates another opportunity to even take it further. So it's a rapidly changing field. What do you predict five, 10 years from now? How are you gonna drive that uh, customer experience with, and what technologies do we need to bring to the table? So I think this is my thought. Uh, obviously, uh, autonomy is, has been a very hot and important topic that all OEMs are pushing on. But I really think we're gonna point more is around edge computing. That's actually the real-time decision-making through artificial intelligence to drive changes to those infield conditions at that point in time. If you go back to 15 years ago, it was all about getting uh, historical layering maps, looking at that, that drove a prescription. That's still going to be important, but I think more and more real-time infield changes because that placement of that seed relative to temperature, depth, compaction is so critical to get uniform em emergence. I think that's where we're going to drive towards that. That bring it the most perfect seed placement, right, right uh, uh, spot and the right depth that's going to just improve, continue to improve yields. And how do you get the weather to cooperate? We haven't figured that out yet, so that, that app has not been developed yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 10 years from now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 
Um, I have a little bit of background um, from my from where I was raised, not quite ag, but close in the commercial salmon business. And I knew what a with a, a family-owned business how important those years were. But I also have some experience in the pharmaceutical industry. And I know we went through a lot of failures before we got the big win. In fact, I was told if you, uh, if you, you could go through your whole career in the pharmaceutical business and, and never have a success. So is this what it's like in egg, or how do you, how do you deal with that concept? Well, it's, uh, uh, so to put in some context, and, and many of you are, can appreciate this, you know, a farmer typically only has 40 attempts to grow the most perfect crop, right? I mean, maybe it's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but they only get one chance a year. So the pressure's on for that, that growing opportunity to, to really uh, capitalize not only the, the seeding, but also the, all the steps that go through the ultimate harvest. Uh, and so it's, it's knowing that when you bring technology to a farmer, understanding once you get kind of past some of the folks that are early adopters that can take some of the bumps, but when it goes into production, it's got to work and it's got to be supported. Because again, a farmer doesn't have many uh, attempts throughout their life to, to get that perfect crop. Yeah, so how do you, how do you, what do you think is the most important trait you can bring to the farmer? Like, how do you develop that trust that's so important? Yeah, I, so I think, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a story, and I, and I tend to uh, uh, connect uh, that trust attribute uh, in terms of importance, not only from a farmer, but also a dealer. And I think it's one and the same, because farmers rely on dealers, and dealers have strong relationships with, with farmers. Several years ago in a prior job, I uh, was responsible for a software application that got launched. It was a very critical application. It was all, and the application's focus was providing uh, service instructions to tractors. So kind of important if a tractor breaks. It was one of the most worst application launches probably in the history. And there's a few people who know exactly which application I'm talking about here. But it literally brought down dealerships. It brought down computers. It was horrible. A month after release it, I had to stand up in front of a thousand dealer personnel and say, hey, this is on me. It's all on me. It's not reflective of, uh, of what we want to, uh, of the quality standards I have for our organization or of the company. I'm going to fix this. Two years later, I was in an advisory meeting and uh, some of the same dealer personnel were there. And I said, hey, listen, I'm going to charge you more money for an application. And uh, I had a dealer come up to me and said, you know what? I can support you charging more money because I had said well, how we're going to invest that money and where we're going to go and what the benefit you're going to see. He says, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to support it because two years ago you stood up and you said you were going to fix this mesh and you did. So I believe you. I trust you. That's what you're, it's your, you're asking for more, but you're going, to, you're going to deliver what you promise. And I think the point there is they remember. And they're also okay if you make mistakes, but own up to that mistake and, and correct it. And I think that's how you really establish and maintain that trust. So owning it is yeah. very, very important. You said it was a software application. Tell me about your experience in, in uh, computer science and generating uh, new softwares. I'm very good at Excel modeling. So, uh, so I know, but I, but I do know enough to ask, I think, uh, and I've learned a lot over the years through not asking, but I've also learned a lot through asking. And I learned by not asking to see the end result that would ha perhaps happen. So no, I don't have a, a, any type of software background at all. Uh, but I do know what we're trying to do is create applications to support a business process. And I think that's, as we think about the application space and new, new technologies, you got to get real clear on what the problem is you're trying to solve and what's the expected outcome or value it's going to deliver. And if you kind of start from that kind of framing, I think you can help guide software teams and, and development teams and really point them in the right, right direction. On this campus, we have a lot of interdisciplinary uh, research going on, and a lot of innovation comes out of that. We really value bring to, bringing together different, different disciplines um, to form these, these teams for convergent research. Can you talk about sort of the, the different disciplines that you bring together within your company? And maybe there's external stakeholders, too, that you bring to get the best product possible. Yeah, I think uh, a little bit of plug for, for Agco, but I think one of the benefits of a, of a large company because our, our role in, in kind of the, the broader uh, agricultural ecosystem is to bring products of scale, right? We want to bring good ideas globally to farmers that everyone can benefit, regardless of the machine form or color that you have, support that so when something does go wrong, back to my example, they own it, they fix it. But I think the benefit of a company like Agco is, if you, uh, is that multi multi discipline. It's the different perspectives. 
and have the opportunity to move from a, one role to a different functional role. And it's amazing what you can bring into a new position that you can carry forward and that you can apply in a different context. So we really kind of look for that in our people and we expect that in our people because we think at the end of the day that drives a better experience for the farmer. So you've been in the industry for a while. How much has your job changed over that time? Uh, it's changed a lot. You know, I've had a, a lot of different functional roles, but I think the biggest change that's and it's really occurring right now is the amount of change that happens literally daily. I mean, there is so many new ideas, and you know, we spent a couple of days here and understanding what the university is doing in terms of their incubator programs, the venture capital pro opportunities. That was not around 10 plus years ago. There was not this level of ideas and investment. Literally weekly, I get an idea uh, of a new startup of a new technology, trying to solve a different problem in a different way. And so it's, it's a great time to be in the industry. So what are you looking for in, in our student, our student graduates, our alumni? Uh, so, you know, first, obviously, Illinois is a very good school. It's hard for me to say that being an IU graduate, but I will say that. Um, we, you know, we're looking, for, so we, we put a lot of uh, 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 kind of credibility on the university to, to bring the right students in and get them uh, uh, to the right kind of uh, academic training, but past that, what we're really looking for is attitude. You know, can you really articulate why you wanna be part of ADCO, why you align with our purpose, what gets you excited uh, every day to come to work? Because we can see that. We, and that kind of uh, enthusiasm, commitment, passion to join, to support our strategies, our purpose, uh, the, the broader team, that's what we're really looking for. And you've had the opportunity to transition to ADCO really in the last year. Uh, when you transitioned, how did you jump in with both feet uh, to understand your new role and um, really deliver to the customer? Well, in, in one way, it was kind of easy because uh, I think one of the approach that uh, we have at ADCO is truly a farmer first approach. So we start with the farmer and then work backwards. We don't care what kind of equipment you have. We'll sell you a tractor, plant, or combine. What we're most important about is bringing the right technology solution to make you have a better experience and a better farming uh, opportunity. Thanks. I want to just take a little commercial break here because um, I have lots of questions still, but I don't want to dominate. Are there any questions out there that um, we'd like to ask Mark? I'd love to hear from a student too. And I, you know, I've been in the classroom a lot, so I can sit up here a very long time and be very quiet until someone volunteers a question. Do we have this? Hello. Okay. If you're too shy, to come up to the microphone, you guys can also go to researchpark.illinois.edu, go to our ag tech page, you can submit your questions online too. I'll ask a quick question. Mark and I got to spend all day together yesterday, so now I can quiz them. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I, hey Mark, I'd love to hear your feedback on all the aspects of campus you saw yesterday. What was exciting to you? Where do you see opportunities to grow your partnership with Illinois? Yeah, so uh, you know, I had an opportunity to come down here about four or five years ago and it's absolutely fantastic to see the level of change and investment you know, from that period of time to now. But what I was most excited about is hear about the, the incubator approach, the, the uh, VC funding that you're provide, that I uh, have access to, to fund new ideas. Because that's where we see as a path to bring innovation to the farming, farmer market, for the farmers. And so, uh, you know, so I guess the, it's just the change, the continued investment, hearing about your future plans. I, you know, I really could see Champaign being a, I call it a, a grown-up tech hub, right? Get some, someone used the term yesterday, uh, adult housing was the term. I forgot who used that, but I think that was a good way to kind of describe What's your vision? So I think that that's really got us excited about uh, the opportunities here. Yeah, and we're really working hard under Laura's leadership and, and others uh, to really grow that um, with some campus investments into entrepreneurship. And also, you know, entrepreneurship not, may not be uh, the path for everyone, where we're really working hard to develop and uh, nurture those partnerships with the outside, outside world and those um, corporations. We talk about this a lot, that at the University of Illinois, we can do all we want within our walls using our federally sponsored portfolio, but unless we get it out to the world, it's not gonna have impact. So we value all the corporate people in the room because we need you to make sure that we, we have that impact. Um, this, this last year, I had the opportunity to work with the National Science Foundation um, in anticipation of a new directorate that would really help with commercialization and translation. And um, you know the federal government's very interested in this and, and trying to be more nationally competitive. So one of the things that we talked about a lot was the tech push 
and the commercialization pole and the valley of death in between them. And we think about all those great innovations that are going in, in on, at the university. So picking up on some of the things you just said, how can you help us um, with the push-pull? Yeah, so I think a couple of things. One thing is this uh, uh, investment in uh, you know, providing connectivity to, to rural America because that is the infrastructure to deliver a lot of the technology to the farmer into the kind of the broader ecosystem to support the farmer. So I think, uh, and I've been involved in that, and Agco as a company has been involved in that, and so that, that's one area. I think the other idea is just continue the partnership. You know, I think if the more opportunities we can demonstrate success of taking an idea from an incubator to a VC to a corporation and, and, and growing that uh, you know, through, through our channels, I think that, that's another way. You know, we have about 850 students in our research park, and we're really proud of that. I think it's the largest number in the in the nation. And when we open up a, uh, our our center, our new centers, our new innovation centers in partnership, um, we often talk about the leg up that these companies give to our students and the product that we're helping develop in in our students to deliver back to the, this industry. So. I think that the, this is really important. So they know how to go out to those companies and, and help translate toward commercialization. We think it's great, yeah. Keep feeding it to us. Okay, so. we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, Agco, Agco is global, um, yet we're sitting here in Champaign-Urbana. From a global perspective, how do you think about innovation and what what's the same elsewhere and, and what's different? How can we help? Yeah, so uh, what's same is that all, all farmers have problems. Uh, what's different is they're all different problems, <laughs> but they do center on some commonalities. One is around data flow, accuracy, uh, uh, you know, guidance type of technology. But it, what's, if you, if it, I mean, I visit farmers all over the world. I mean, there's a different problem set that you're trying to solve for in a, a farmer in Brazil who's got 10 combines running in parallel together versus a, a farmer in Iowa that's got, you know, 2,000 acre field. Different problem set for a farmer uh, in Europe that may rely on a contractor to do some of their farming operations versus a, you know, a, an owner-operator. So the key thing is, is to really uh, visit those farmers, hear what they are trying to, where they need help, their pain points, and then you'll bring the right technology. So what can Illinois can do, you may want to have some extension campuses outside of Champaign. Uh, in all honesty, because farming is so different. I mean, it's farming, but there's, just a, there's different complexities in different geographies of the world. Thanks for that. Now, I just want to make sure, again, I'm not dominating the questions. Does anyone else have a question out there? And can you just um, introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, I'm Avery Plody. I'm an undergraduate <clears throat> excuse me, in computer science and crop sciences. And so I was wondering, farmers are notoriously hard to, you know, kind of sell new technology. Anyway, uh, farmers are notoriously hard to sell new technology to you. So when you're de developing your customer experience, how do you kind of weigh that to, you know, convince them that the new stuff you're developing is worthwhile for them to take? Yeah, I'll, I'll give a little bit of a company plug here. Uh, if you want to kind of see that in action, go to Precision Planning's YouTube videos because they're all about teaching, right? It's not a sales approach, it's a teaching. Here's, here's different things we've tried. Here's different technologies you can bring to improve you know, your, your, your planning performance to ultimately improve your yield. And I think that's what I've seen. I've been directly involved with that for over 15 years is caught making the market. Because you're right, farmers can be skeptical. You have to demonstrate, you have to prove them several times. So it's out teaching, explaining, showing the value, and then once they actually try it, make sure that value that, that we've told them they're going to realize actually happens. Because if it doesn't, that's where you, you break the trust. But precision planning, that's their, one of their core competencies, is really kind of teaching the farmer about the attributes and the value that it can provide. Any more questions? I have to tell you, I think our undergraduates are far more sophisticated than I ever was at your age. So thank you for that. That's, that was a terrific a terrific question. So what type of uh, disciplines are you recruiting for at AGCO? I think it's good for our, our young students, our young right. professionals, to really understand the diversity. Yeah, I mean, so we, I think we're probably recruiting in all cross functions, finance, uh, engineering, software development, price supply management. 
uh, you know, we have uh, no shortage of opportunities to front for the right candidates. So I think, again, it, it, uh, if there's anyone out there that has interest in AGCO, you know, please reach out and, you know, we could talk about our internship opportunities either here or, you know, at some of our locations. But uh, uh, I think that's one of the benefits of AGCO. There's multiple entry points, uh, you know, really based on what your, your uh, academic training is. And that's just an entry point. That's right. right. That's a key thing to, s to stress because you know, w you know we're looking for the right person, and I think that's uh, if you you know you can develop your own career within a company like Agco and get different types of experiences, cause different types of functions, and have a, a global slant to it as well. Can you talk a little bit about your umbrella now, your umbrella of functionalities that you pull together and work with? Yeah, so the kind of the role I'm in right now is really focused on uh, looking at companies to buy or partner with. So when we go through this exercise, you know, we're bringing in engineering, we're bringing in marketing, we're bringing support. Because again, what we're trying to do is identify technologies to scale on a global basis. And to do that, we've got a series of processes that they need to, they need to fit into. So it's a cross-functional, multi-geography team that's weighing in on assessing our opportunities and how we can really successfully grow that, to not lose that user, uh, to, to maintain the user experience, but not to break that trust. You just opened up a whole new door for us. So entrepreneurs, which, what, what do you want to tell our entrepreneurs that are working on their innovations and how they approach a, a company? So I think if you're, if you're coming to us, uh, you know, what we want to know is uh, what's the problem you're trying to solve and what's the value you're going to provide? And to the extent you can quantify that, that really is helpful because that drives the financials. And then we'll get into things like, you know, what, what do you see, you know, in terms of ongoing investment, more inv you know, what more investments you need to take to market, uh, positioning relative to other technologies, uh, what type of IP you own, what type of IP you've got in process that are being filed, what limitations you may have uh, related to your IP, but then we would dive really deeper into understanding the, you know, the core fundamentals of the business. Right. So how do they get in that door? How do they get that door They open? can contact me. Oh, so. there you go. <laughs> so <I'd be, laughs> we I'm off a good there. contact point. So. Okay, yeah. that's very good. I see Laura standing there. How much time do we have? We have six minutes. Oh, two minutes. Any questions? Any entrepreneurs have a question? I do have a, um, I'm standing behind the speaker because so I don't want to get feedback, but I do <laughs> have a question that came in online. And now I just walked away from it. Um, this comes from a master's student, and he would like to know, what's Agco's pitch to students to work for you? Our pitch is, again, we, we've got a very, I think... Uh, now, there's other corporations in yeah. here. You're going to give it away. Well, I know, but we've stated this publicly <laughs> in our analyst reviews. I mean, we, we, we truly take a farmer focus first approach, right? We, we're trying to solve the problems of a farmer. We're not bringing, you got to buy this machine to get the technology. We're, we're trying to solve... Uh, a set of complex problems that are very important in this world around sustainability, limited resources, growing population. So our, our purpose, we think, is quite clear, and we need very smart people and dedicated people to help solve that. Thanks, and I want to really thank everybody for being here. This is such a vibrant community, and each and every one of you are part of that, whether you're coming in from out of town or, you're, or this is where, you're, where your home is. So thank you very much. Laura? Thank you. Thank you.